Hello, and welcome back to Factorio Sandbox. This is hopefully a really short episode. Um, while I was doing the GM8 rocket launch um, competition a few weeks ago, um, I think it was JD, anyway, someone on the map uh, came up with a, a train unloader where you would unload from the train carriages so there'd be a train running here. Let's put the train in for the sake of illustration. Okay, so there would be a, a train here. Okay, and you'd take items out of the train carriage into a box. That's all fairly standard. Then there was some contraption involving uh, splitters to get two inserters to saturate a blue belt. Now if you think about it, the um, stack inserters with all their bonuses can move more than 20 items a second. So two of them, in theory, can move more than enough material to saturate a fast belt. Sorry, an express belt. However, it takes time to drop items onto the belt. And it's that drop time that prevents the arm swinging back quick enough to be able to actually fill a belt. So this is the vanilla example. This is where we're loading both sides of the belt with, um, with stack inserters. And you can see the arms swing backs and forwards. While they're back swinging, there's gaps in the belt. Okay, so what could we do to change this? Um, in the olden days, you could compress by putting things into an underground. So I thought I would just demonstrate what that looks like. So we're putting into an underground. It's not swinging any faster, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that is swinging any faster than putting onto the belt. Um, and anyway, because we're not putting things onto opposite sides, we then have to rebalance. Okay, um, you could put directly into the splitter, so getting rid of this underground. Um, and again, we're not fully saturating the belt. And the reason is, it comes back to the mechanics of inserting into splitters. So this is something I'd never really investigated before. When you insert onto a splitter, it behaves as if um, you're putting things into the output side. So you see here, we're putting onto the bottom half of the splitter and it's coming out on the bottom half. Similarly, we're putting onto the top half of the splitter, it's coming out on the top half. If we cut the belt there, you can see it's not doing any of the splitter stuff. It's jammed because it's put it onto the output. Right. Um, now, just to illustrate, if we instead put this way, so let's give it some wood. Okay, that's putting onto the input. So it's putting onto the far side, which is the input. Um, so then we, let's, yeah, uh, put, something else, put something else in here. Okay, so this is putting onto the input side, which then causes it to be split. Now, obviously, putting onto the input side from this side, we can't actually access this output. So we don't get two outputs. However, if you load onto the side of a splitter, it again gets put to the input side of the splitter which means it can then be pushed to both outputs. And because it's pushed to both outputs, it's being consumed twice as quickly, which is pretty cool. So this swings not quite twice as fast, but maybe one and a half times as fast as this does. And you can convince yourself that's a meaningful improvement in throughput by, that's the wrong way around. 
Right. By side loading that in, you can see it's almost a full belt. It's a couple of items short of a full belt, whereas this has great big gaps. This has quite small gaps. And this is where it gets interesting. So you can load onto both sides of a splitter. And as long as you have two outputs, um, it takes all those items, distributes them across. Because this one is loading onto the its far side of the belt, which is the bottom. This one is loading onto its far side of the belt, which is the top. So by loading on both sides, we are loading onto the bottom and top belt. So one, one insert is only loading onto the top belt, but both top belts. The other one's only loading onto the bottom belt, but both bottom belts. So then you can do one of these lane balances to scoosh, zip the two back together. And that gives you a belt with holes, but they're quite small gaps. Okay, so let's go down. So this is our naive just inserted onto the belt. This is what happens if you insert into the splitter and don't let it split. So it's basically just this, but you've put some extra ironmongery in the way. However, you could load onto the side of the splitter. And if you do that, it's going to swing about two thirds as fast and it nearly fills the belt. So if this was going into a smelter with prob mods where you hadn't done your sums correctly and the smelters were backing up ever so slightly because they were not consuming a full line of ore but producing one full line of belts, which is very common, that's a very common setup, then this would be absolutely fine. So this would be more than enough throughput to back up your um, not so to back up your plate output ratioed smelters. And in practice, you know, things tend to back up. So this would probably work 90% of the time for 90% of builds. Okay, what are the other options? So I just checked that putting things onto the other side does leave gaps. Uh, when side loading like this, I did check that the, the throughput issue wasn't because there was a lack of buffer here. So I added a single belt segment to put some buffer in. And that's in that's got the same gap as this one. So it isn't a buffering issue. It's literally how quickly those items can drop into the splitter. Okay, I did this backwards just for completeness. So this is being split, but we can only take one output because this inserter is in the way of the other output. And just to prove um, we can put things from this side rather than this side. Um, so here we're putting onto the left hand side and the items are dropping through on the right lane. Here we're putting things on the right hand side, things are dropping through on the left hand lane. There's no improvement in the size of the gap. But you can imagine if you're offloading from both sides of a train, uh, you could then, um, where are we? Let's get an underground. You could have this going on one side, right? And then you could stagger this sort of thing on the other side. So offset it by one tile, and that would give you nearly two full belts output from a single carriage. Okay, and then there are cases where filling the belts matters. Uh, so there are cases where your input is being consumed at the speed of a belt. Um, so this would be the case of ore smelters, where you are consuming one belt of ore with prob mods, so you're producing um, more than one belt of plate output, for example. Right, so for that, obviously since two side-loaded splitters very nearly fill a belt, three will fill a belt. So this kind of arrangement lets you pull three times, it then merges that all together. Now the 
problem with this design is that the um, the middle box takes priority. So that middle box is going to tend to drain, uh, and then your um, your carriages will unload unevenly into the boxes, right? Because the the two outside boxes are dumping roughly half the material. So when you're unloading the train, it's going to have to spend twice as long loading up this one. Um, you could get around that by do so doing something like that off the train. Right, but now we're increasing the number of inserters again. So we've added two extra inserters in a box to make this work. Um, yeah, that's not ideal. Not ideal. Okay, so then what else could you do? Well, this is a simple trick. Um, it isn't fully compressed, but it is almost fully compressed, and it seems to consume materials roughly evenly. So your boxes would stay roughly as full as one another. Um, so the intuition here is we have two of these things swinging directly onto um, normal belt, and then those zip together. Except they're clearly not enough material to fill a belt, right? Because that is essentially a fancy version of... Where is it? Yeah, that's a fancy version of that, right? So what we do then is we take a third inserter and we split the output of that. We have to put a single piece of belt here to make sure that this is putting onto the input side of the splitter. Then that split output is pushed onto these two belts and it backfills those two belts. Then you zip that together. And this is a fully compressed belt. As far as I can tell, um, in the, it's an almost fully compressed belt. There are the occasional gaps. Um, so I did rebuild this um, where everything was uranium. Yeah, you can see the gaps now. So there are the occasional gaps in the top belt. Um, they're single item gaps, but they are there. So uh, this isn't quite good enough if you need totally compressed belts, but if you had any kind of stutter or backup in the system, that would be fine. This is the contraption you want if you want to guarantee absolutely saturated belts. So it requires three stack inserters, two splitters. The intuition here is we pull off with a standard inserter material to fill the top and the bottom belt. Then this side loads into a splitter. You then split that, and this middle one backfills this line and this line. So that guarantees that the belt overall is saturated. Again, the, the downside of this design is that um, this middle box is emptying slightly faster than these two outside ones. Now it's nothing like as bad as the as this and this uses three splitters and this uses two um, but you would still need you, you still might end up in a situation where the, the train is stuck filling up the middle chests um, Again, you could probably fix that by something like that and moving that down one. Um, I don't think that's very nice. Anyway, this is as far as I've got with train unloading to try and saturate blue belts. Um, so these, this build and this build saturate the belt. This one is marginally preferable in terms of balanced taking from the input boxes. This one is marginally preferable in using less materials. 
Um, I think by the time you're doing blue belts, you don't care. So perhaps this is the better option. The other downside with this is train carriages are six long. Um, I've heard of bugs where trains align one square too far forward or backwards. So this inserter or this inserter wouldn't be lined up. So these more compressed unloaders are um, the tidier design. Um, but anyway, yeah, so just to recap, if you are doing something where there's where you don't need a full belt and things are going to back up slightly, that's the build. It's nice and simple, two splitters align in the middle. If you're doing something where you absolutely have to have a saturated belt and you don't mind a wide build, you use this. If you need, if you can get away with a nearly saturated belt, then this build works. If you have to have a totally saturated belt and it has to fit in the middle section of the carriages and you don't care about the middle chest here getting slightly unbalanced, you use this build. Right, that's it. Um, I'm going to end that here. It was just a quick tour of how to unload trains. Um, I might do some more of these as as the spirit moves, um, but in the meantime, let's just look at the simple beauty of this unloader. All right, see you again soon. Bye.